Hi everyone! Are you experiencing coolness in your neck of the woods? I'm in the U.S. of A. And it's chilly! And it's May. And it's a very merry month of May. We're in unprecedented times with the pandemic globally. And I have a new spin on it, or at least insight. So I am by a practitioner of Planetary Tantra, a.k.a. Tan Kalika because I'm also part of um, another aspect of Planetary Tantra, which is claiming my place in, as an empowered individual who can utilize gifts of spirit and soul, and that, that comes through me from the earth itself, because I am her, she, I am part of her. She's my, she is the great mother. So, <clears throat> Here it is. Um, let's not bellyache anymore about the pandemic, really, because it actually has a flip side, and it's that people who have been worked too hard have actually been able to take it easy and have a um, renaissance, a personal renaissance. I've become closer to my guy because he doesn't go into an office every day and hang out with all these other people and kill time. Instead, he gets to work from home and uh, I actually find out how much people don't work, meaning they do work, but you can't constantly, just like an athlete that runs 100 meters, isn't always running at high speed, are they? So the insight I'm going to give you is that I recognized that um, through what I learned from John Lamb Lash, as uh, the Earth is a sentient being, and we're in her dream, and she's now and has been lucid in her dream. We are part of her dream. It's like our physical bodies are part of the Earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and that we are actually really powerful and the power comes from being able to think clearly and exercise free will without it being willful. Um, it's like free will is not about getting your way. Free will is about actually being here. <laughs> Yay! You exercise free will. Here you are, okay? So, it's, it's, look at things as benefit. The pandemic benefits, benefited. I got a long vacation and I got to reprioritize. And if I just worry, if I worry about getting my needs met, like not starving and, and, and not losing my house, and you know, um, if I worry about my needs, then, and they're, and they're met, see? that I'm not leveraging the opportunity to unplug. And people want to go back to normal? What's normal? I mean, was running around all frantically buying stuff and eating shit food and talking shit and being all trendy, is that really the normal? Look what nature did. Nature came back. So people didn't work. We have uh, less gas pipe emissions. So other than the downside of people actually going broke, I don't know anybody that's in that situation, but I'm sure they exist. There's so many people on the fucking planet, okay? So take a look at it when you're in the airplane and you're looking down. <laughs> I can remember going, wow, and in that house, there's at least, with every light, there's at least a person, and there's just so many of us. Um, and I'm not saying anything about population control. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there's so many consciousnesses that when we collectively recognize that the pandemic benefits the globe, she used it for her advantage. <laughs> Who cares where it came from? Who cares? 
where it came from. Who cares? She's going to use it like the moon. Oh, the moon's a construct brought here by the archons. Who cares? She's going to use it. Oh, the internet, it's all about AI, and it's going to, like, they have a false matrix reality, and they're uploading your, your uh, actual human consciousness into it right now, and there's going to be a virtual world, and you're going to be stuck in it because you're going to be a board. Fuck that shit. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's not happening to this chick rooney No. No way. I'm an earth child. You know, I belong to a, a, a circle of women, and E.T., Elizabeth T., um, <clears throat> she was prided herself in having extraterrestrial memory, and she had this woman's circle, and I got tired of it because it wasn't fun, and they didn't laugh, and she called me Pollyanna. And um, so I played the glad, glad game all the time. Anyway, this is my point. Um, she said to me, Kat, so you, oh, Kat, you know, you're leaving the circle? And I'm like, yeah. And I paid money. I actually paid the rest of my three months to get out of this fucking circle because I'd already agreed and the contract's a contract and I'm, I'm good for my word. So I went ahead and paid her and got out of this stupid group. But um, they didn't laugh and they belly ached a lot. <laughs> so breathing <laughs> and laughing are pretty darn important to me. <laughs> So I kept holding my breath there, waiting for some more of the women to stop talking and complaining and actually enjoy their lives. So anyway, I tell her I'm leaving, and I tell her privately, of course. And uh, she's like, "Well, Cat, so you don't want to you don't want to come with the rest of us when the ship comes?" I'm like, "What? Yeah, I don't want to come with the rest of you when the ship comes. I'm on the best ship there is. I'm on the mothership, though." <laughs> I'm on the mothership, baby, and it's my mother, and I've heard of her, and she's dreaming me, and I'm in her dream, and that's the biggie. The biggie is, this isn't so bad. This is what you do. Stay conscious in the moment. So I'm like, okay, the face mask has now become all trendy. You're going to, you know, when the burqa became um, acceptable, uh, when women with with the headdress made it onto the to the catwalk. It was like, oh look, you can be glamorous in a burqa. All well, now, people are gonna be glamorous in these stupid face masks. Well, you know what these face face masks are preventing you from doing? <sighs> Breathing in the air you need that mother is giving because whatever they're a virus. She will take it and mutate it. It's already mutated into 50 other forms. Who the fuck cares who started this thing? She <laughs> put her own spin on it, man. Woo, woo. So it's your job as a human being to evolve or die. <laughs> and who's dying, man? Who's dying? Are they exactly specimens of good health? Are these people people? who actually exercised? Hmm? Did they eat right? Did they take care of their bodies? Did they laugh? Did they have a good time? Or were they fat fucks that ate diabetes-causing foods? Or whatever, you know? It's like, we all know life is tough and some type people have it tougher than others, but <laughs> here you are. And wherever you are, you manifest. You manifest the joy of your being. I'm gardening. I'm going to go back and get my, at my, at my studio, I'm going to get my paints and paint again. I, I haven't been able to do my books because I'm sort of like, what's more important? Waking up with the planet? She's awake. What's more important to me? Willfully, dutifully proven to the world that I've written a book or to actually be actively involved in the process of healing because the planet is happier without all the stupid humans running around all frantic. <laughs> now, if only we could get the corporations to stop polluting it, because that's what's going down, right? Whatever's happening to the planet is happening to you. So we're getting, so what now? So what? You've got to actually allow her to heal you. Figure it out. 
So I found some cool information. So other than I'm not looking at this pandemic as I can't wait to get back to normal, I'm sort of like what was so great about normal in the first place. And uh, also I'm reprioritizing. I used to be all about going downtown to eat and, and like, oh yeah, you know, I know all the hipster places. Um, and it just, I, I did, after a while, right before this happened, um, I remember saying to somebody, it's ridiculous how bartenders have become godlike and that people worship the bartender and they're making libations that aren't any more necessary than a shot glass. I mean, you just need a shot glass, tequila, and lime. <laughs> That's all. That's all. And maybe a really good organic Bloody Mary mix so you can make Bloody Marias. What else do you need in life <laughs> if, you, if you're a bartender? So I used to, like, I, I, this is what happened. Like, we'll share bartending stories. I got to the point where I was like, I don't want you to do all this fancy stuff and put it in a little tiny pony glass that I shoot down in seconds when you just fiddled around and made this libation out of all these ingredients that I don't even know. I don't, I don't even have words for these things that these guys and gals come up with. It's got, it, it got, okay, all you need is sarsaparilla, men. <laughs> That's, there's a reason why they had sarsaparilla root beer, folks. And there was a reason why we had the soda fountain. Those elixirs and things like that, like elderberry extract, they make the best drinks ever. And instead, people, like, what do they do? They put sugar in it. You don't need simple syrup. So this is what I would say to the bartenders. I'd be like, okay, what I want is something closest thing to real alcohol and one of those big square cubes. I don't want you to make my drink and a little tiny glass that you shake, 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 and then you strain it over ice. Just give me whatever glass, whatever drink comes with a big square cube. Which one? And that's how I would order my drink if I was going to. Because <clears throat> like, you know, I was trying it out. We were, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. Try out the fancy new cocktails. So I did. So where am I going with it? Yeah, is where I'm going with it is that I actually thought how ridiculous it was that bar bars and bartenders got to that level of, of ridiculousness. And um, we'll see what happens after this. But why don't you put something healthy in your drink besides simple syrup? So John Lamb Lash, A Divine Calling, is on Ginny Thwaites um, station. It's that one. And he released this last month. And it woke me up. Because I'm like, there's a con, all right? Okay? She's using this thing to shake off some of the things she doesn't want. What's wrong with that? At the very end, he's like, prepare for a new career change. And I thought to myself, the mother is speaking directly to me through him. I always wanted to go to art school. The divine calls, I'm answering, man. Secondly, the second watchword is to hold to correction. Hold to correction. Once you have this concept, this is a momentous, transformative concept. Correction. John. Hold to correction, folks. Nemeta.org is where you go. Now, this is an archaeological device, as you can see. However, <clears throat> I have this up to show you where you can get it, and then you make your own. Um, <coughs> the Shakti Cluster app allows you, if you're in Planetary Tantra, to have an active involvement in the Telerik field of the correction, AKA she's already awakened, she's, she's lucid in her dream, and we, our consciousness waking up that the Earth and us 
our connected integral ring. And what, what happens to the earth is happening to us, and what's happening to us is happening to the earth. She's being poisoned and raped too. Oh my, my, where is this going to lead us? Who knows? But obviously, um, structures are falling away, and, you know, we're all going to play the game differently now, but this is a game. Did I finish what he was saying? And that won't come up. Um, so... All right, Sylvie of New Earth played this, the Hospital Night, which is basically, this is the video. Okay, and then in it, Master of the Chain, at 2614, she talks about something that she had in a vision. Uh, most people sadly seem to absorb eagerly and completely comply with. And from what I see, this heavy, dark cloud of compliance and not thinking and alcoholism and I don't care and all that attitude and I don't want to wear, no, people talk so many things. This type of confusion, because of it, uh, we see the biblical time with the great tribulation, which is quite a rough ride. I mean, forming in front of our eyes in the last weeks and months very actively, very, very recently, the Pope met with an important um, Muslim leader. They, they kissed on the lips. The, uh, the modern now virus, and when from the skies hail the size of uh, cars is uh, falling down, uh, and uh, people are being marked, saints are being killed and prosecuted. Even in those times, two representatives of the gods sit in the middle of uh, Jerusalem and advise for uh, years. At the end, they are uh, murdered, and that's uh, when the Great Tribulation most likely starts. But still, that uh, indicates that even in the difficult timeline, there is an existing infrastructure of the sensible people as well. Yep. In the biblical timeline, they do reveal... So, there will be a split-off, sort of like that. <laughs> and there will, there will be people who go through very tough times. So, for instance, I am going to allow myself full exposure to whatever is in the air, and the um, light within me is expanding to the point of recognizing my connection to the galactic center, but it's through the earth. So E.T. had told me what, you know, I, when I left the circle group that she was no fun in, she was like, what? You're not going to go on the ship with us? And I'm like, no. And that's when I got my wake-up call which was, no, I love my earth. I'm going to stay here and be with the planet. Well, she's the mothership. Where she goes, I go. <laughs> Through the heart to the core. I mean, isn't it more obvious? So um, the app was on that particular. They talked about it, and I, I showed you it. And now I can't find it. So... Um, I don't need to preach to the choir anymore. Now I'm recognizing that. Um, I'm no longer teaching elementary school, which is, okay, everybody, this is what you got to do. No, instead, it's like, hey, isn't this fun? This is actually an adventure, and let's treat it as such. So I am still writing my books. However, I'm looking to do it in such a way that I feel it as, I'm, it's like I'm going to cry without trying to sensationalize, without trying to appeal to an editor, without trying to become anything other than authentic, just being, and to write it in such a way that it will bring value, not just sensationalism. 
And the two books are about when I was an um, adult entertainer. Uh, Lady Girls is um, when I was a phone sex um, person. And then through a plexiglass, <clears throat> it was hands off. And then the other one was when um, I actually danced um, three sets on a stage and then was a bee drinker. So you went to the table with your fancy dress on and you encouraged men to drink. Um, and they bought you a drink, but it would always be virgin. But they would always charge the man for alcohol. And the cocktail waitress just didn't like me because I thought that was unethical and I wouldn't do it. And they always wanted me to order a drink and I always ordered just plain, like I'd never asked for a salty dog and got grapefruit juice, if you know what I mean, with um, vodka in it. I actually would just get the grapefruit juice. I refused to play that game. And they even told me, the cocktail waitresses, well, you know, they don't have to know. And I'm like, but I do. Like, why would I do that? Why would I take a, a man who's worked hard for his money and he's willing to be entertained and tip me for my dances and then buy me a beverage? Why would I then lie about its alcohol content and charge him more? Couldn't do it. So that's the kind of person I am. Um... So yes, uh, uh, I thought that in this, I've been out of my, I spent almost two months since I've been away. Um, I got my house plants and all my valuables and, and brought them, um, meaning clothes and computer. <laughs> brought them to my guy's house. And I, at first, you know, I was like, this is a scam. And I was angry and upset about it. And now I'm like, we're living in the greatest time. We are living when you will see the human beings who are coherent and connected, mind, body, and spirit, emotions, their bodies, their hearts all lined up, living their lives with purpose. And then you have the scaredy cats Lowest common denominator of human being. You got people like this. <laughs> so, one of the, I was trying to tell you is what Sylvie was saying about this app is that when you use the app, um, she said it's handheld, it's like something on your phone. And she says it somewhere in that video, the Hospitaler uh, Night acquires world gold reserve and asks the parasites to say their end prayers. It's somewhere in this here video. And it doesn't matter because if you're following Planetary Tantra, um, you will recognize what I'm going to say. You can get your archontic device, you can put it onto airplane mode, you can have gone to nemeta.org because we always have our phones on us. Here are chips. You're not going to have to worry about a forced vaccine. Type in swine flu 60 minutes, okay, in your YouTube search bar. You'll find out the swine flu created permanent neurological damage, from my understanding, unless the person was faking it. So anyway, um, you, get, you put it in your photos, and then you have it. Now, I'm going to show you, this is how it's designed to be used. This person is showing us how it's designed to be used. It's in their hand. You get the JPEG file, and then you create it. Or you do what I did, <laughs> which is essentially, I have at the ready, in airplane mode, my Shakti Cluster app on my phone. So I have it at all times. Yep. And you all know what to do about the blue spot, the amber spot. You know what shift we're in whenever we're in it. Right? So this is adventurous. And look at the flip side. Like Become even more one with the earth. Be 
reach in further into your heart, bring in more of your higher self. Like go down deeper into her and uh, enjoy the ride. We'll talk some more. Much love.